In APQC's continuing series, Keys to Making Change Management Last, APQC's research specialist, Abby Heller, talks to Richard Bevan, author of Change Making, a practical, ready-to-use guide on managing change within an organization. Richard is also a consultant and educator with a background in organizational communication, the management of change, and leadership development. I'm wondering if you could tell me a little bit about why organizational change is so stinking hard. <laughs> um, very good question. Because the reality is it shouldn't be. Right. Um, because the reality is not only does, do most people know how to manage change because they deal with it throughout their lives at home, you know, in their recreational life, in their jobs as well. They see all the things that go wrong. They know it has to be done right. Mm-hmm. And we can get to what those things are in a moment. So that's the that's the irony. And yet, um, at work, things come unstitched. And the reason, one of the, there are many reasons, but one of them is um, the kind of how to describe the pressure of business, um, pressure of ongoing activity. Um, the, the the organization makes a decision, wants to go in another direction, whether it's you know new equipment, reorganization, you know big merger. You know, a small scale relocation, something like that. Um, and, but everybody's fully occupied kind of doing their work. And suddenly there's this potentially major project overlaid. Um, and what typically happens is the memo on conference call, the classic memo on conference call. Okay, let's tell people what's going to happen. We'll hold the conference call, answer their questions, and then they'll figure out as we go along. And they go back to work and go back to business. And, the conference call of the memo, you know, the ironic, that's what I use the phrase ironic, that people do a bit more than that sometimes, but sometimes they don't, um, does not begin to answer some of the questions. In part, because a lot of the questions don't yet have answers. For example, you know, who's my new boss going to be? We haven't figured it out yet. Uh, what's going to be in fact, in fact impact on my conversation? Well, we haven't actually decided that. You know, are some people going to have to re- relocate? We're still working on it. Um, what's the company that's acquiring that's going to do with us? Uh, answer we don't yet know, um, and so the, the, the and so the organisation starts um, asking questions, generating concerns. Um, start people start talking to each other, calling each other. The attention diverts from customers, um, and uh, and performance falls, which is why the cost of not managing change right is potentially very high. And many many organisations who sort of start off on the wrong track of change find what's going on and say, gee, we need to really turn this around and then finally drag things back, but usually not after, not until uh, there's been some cost in terms of diversion of attention. We've all had the experience of dealing with organizations as a customer that are going through change and, you know, the phone company's been acquired, whatever it has to be, and we find people don't have answers when they're on the phone and they're frustrated not having the answers and customer service is declining. Mm-hmm. But that's a kind of a long-winded response. The bottom line is change isn't managed, but a change to manage change and to be able to deal with change appropriately requires considerable effort. Organizations have huge institutional momentum. They've been doing things a certain way for a certain amount of time. People are set in their ways. They're working very hard, driving down one track. And somebody says, okay, we're going to go in this major new direction. And people never understand the enormous resources that takes, even with a relatively minor course correction. Even if it doesn't require a great deal of planning, it requires a lot of follow-up, correction, answering questions, reassuring people, figuring out new systems, figuring out new ways of rewarding people, um, figuring out new ways of... um, training people or promoting people. So they underestimate that it's like a tanker turning um, and requires effort and requires sustained effort and that is almost invariably underestimated. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why organizations in Barton have made a change. One of the huge questions they have to think about is how are we going to actually manage this? What resources are we going to apply? But it's going to take major, major resources. Mm-hmm. So even if they know we've got to be clear about the strategic direction. Even if they know they've got to engage stakeholders and listen to people and, and, and be prepared to answer the questions, even though they know they've got to communicate the heck out of it both directions up and down, even they know they've got to change systems and all those things, they say, well, let's just hope people can manage this uh, kind of in their ongoing business and, um, and we'll, we'll figure it out. Now, if people do eventually figure it out, and there are many organizations that have made major changes, managed them extremely badly and survived, but there's inevitably a tremendous cost in that, in that mm-hmm. transition. Your, your answer 
leads me to two follow-up questions. The first one is, what? how do you recommend organizations handle it when questions arrive where they don't have the answer? You, know, you said over and over, you know, what's going to happen to my job? What, you know, do I have to relocate? What will compensation be? Okay, good. Good question. The, um, I'll answer it two ways. One is the well-managed change process includes identifying as many as possible of those tough questions to pop ahead. So one of the things we do is we take all the research. We sit down with groups of, let's say, managers and say, here's what's going to happen. Here's how the change is going to go. Here's how we plan to roll it out. Now, let's brainstorm. Ask all your own questions. Ask the questions you think you're going to get from your people. And, you know, and then, you know, 20 minutes later, you've got 120 questions and we organize them and think about them. And then, you know, the task force figures out what the answers are going to be. So when the change rolls out, you hopefully have answers to those, many of those questions. You have an FAQ online. You have the managers trained to respond. So that's part of the answer. So, 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 which is sort of dodging the question. You sort of you, you try to have the answers ready anyway, and there's institutional things you can do to make that happen. But if you don't have the answers, and very often you're not going to have the answers, you go to the deer in the headlights. You say, and managers have to be trained to do this. You say, it's a great question, and we have not got to it yet. But here's what we're doing to, 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 to get the response. So when somebody says, yeah, so you ask a question about, about, let's say, uh, how is my performance management, management going to be handled? And you know, how is my new manager going to know what I've done? And we've already 11 months through the year. It's a, it's a great question. And HR is working on a process for a, sort of a handoff, a one-to-one -one manager to manager handoff. And we'll let you know about it as soon as it's, soon as it's done. So, so the, 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 the important thing not to do is to prevaricate. Uh, you know, for instance, sometimes I've seen senior executives say, well, I'm not going to go talk to this group because I don't have anything to tell them. I don't have the answers. I don't know. And I say, wrong, wrong, wrong. You know, go, go, instead of talking to this group, go and listen to this group. Tell them what you do know and say, you know, now we, you know, we're going to need everybody to pitch in, figure out how we're going to do this. We're going to put task force together. We're looking for input. We've got the, you know, the call in line, whatever it happens to be. But engage in discussion. So you can't tell people stuff. If you can't tell people stuff, you can still discuss with people how should we handle our customers in this transition? How should we deal with, with uh, you know, packaging, labeling, and promote whatever, whatever department you happen to be dealing with? Um, so you can communicate, interact, even if you don't have, have the answers. But daily, you've got to be, you know, be clear about what, what answers you do have and what you don't. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Yes, absolutely. The second question that um, arose from your initial answer was words like communication, training, tools, those are pretty popular concepts in, in change management. Um, and even though organizations seem to think they have those, those items, um, it still isn't necessarily taking hold. So, so, you know, what is the role of communication, training, tools, buy-in, all that sort of stuff, and, and why isn't it necessarily working? Um, let me try and kind of focus the question a little bit more. What you're saying is many organizations going through change do have a lot of, let's say, communication and training systems in place. Right. But they don't necessarily work. Right. Okay. Um, so well, the easy answer is to say, well, they just didn't do them right. Yeah. Not, not very helpful. Um, I'd say two things. I mean, in part, in part, maybe they didn't do them right in the sense that they didn't embed them, they didn't build them on a platform of clear awareness of what stakeholders are thinking and feeling and needing. Um, I've seen a lot of change processes implemented when it's kind of planned behind closed doors and there's a you know, nice little training program for managers. Here's the questions you're going to get. Here's you know, the answers. The reality, however, is that nobody's really gone and talked to stakeholders and found out what the real questions are. And it's always a very revealing process. You talk to stakeholders, and when you've been through change enough, and you know the kinds of questions that get asked, the sort of standard questions, and they do indeed get asked, and it's good and it's important you have answers for them, but you don't know the specifics of this actual implementation. There's going to be stuff lurking you don't know about. And if you haven't uncovered that, then the materials and the tools you put together aren't adequate. 
which, you know, the FAQ does not have an answer to the most important question, which is who's actually going to be head of the Eastern region, mm -hmm. say, or what's going to happen to the bonus pool, um, or, or I don't know, or whatever the, whatever the question might be, uh, what's going to happen to the relocation. The, so, um, so first, make sure that those tools are grounded in a real tested awareness of what stakeholders are thinking and doing. And the best change implementations that I've been associated with are the ones where not just employees, but you know, mid-managers are deeply involved in the task force planning the change, which is going to be a pretty challenging business, but mid-managers might be pretty hostile to change in the first place. Yeah. You can get your task force implementing it to be tough. Right. The process, they sort of come around. It's part of the process itself. Um, so that's the first part of the answer. Make sure you're, you're, you're grounding your tools in real awareness of how people can react, including the hostile reactions, and address those for long. Second, uh, second, how can I say this? Second, it's sort of, it's exhaustive and exhausting. I mean, you, you, uh, there's no end to it. I mean, sometimes people say, gee, when are people going to settle down? And, and, the, and the fact is you can have a well-planned change, good communication materials, and let, the, let put all that stuff out, um, give them the link to the website. I even have a system through which you know, people can put in additional questions and answers. But still, things creak and groan and don't seem to be moving. And you've got to have people at every level, managers at every level, starting from the top, sort of almost obsessively saying to people, you know, how's it going? How you, what do you think? How are you feeling about it? Um, you're in the corridor and the meeting is about other things. Just, you know, before we get started, just a moment, how, what does everybody think about the, 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 the um, uh, you know, sales reporting system transition? You know, how's it working for you? And the people look a little glum and then you say, come on, sort of, what, the, the, we need to know if things aren't working. Some says, well, actually, you know, the, the, I don't know, the sort of, in the face that I have to use on the road, is, you know, everyone knows it's completely useless, but um, uh, and then conversation begins and you uncover some real obstacle. But uh, if you don't do that, sort of almost obsessive follow-up, how's it going, are you doing okay, what do you need, any ideas, um, then it, it, you know, change creeps and grows and maybe doesn't really get um, implemented or goes forward, but at high cost with people unhappy and people complaining and people grumbling. So, uh, so I'm trying to summarize the answer to the question to make these things, why do these things not work? But in another way, how to make them work. One, ground in real knowledge of what stakeholders are thinking and expecting. Two, try to make them comprehensive, look at every group of stakeholders and have something ready for them. And three, most important, don't rely on those tools without supporting them with human, face-to-face, follow-up, discussion, questions, um, research, how's it going, what do you need, how can I help, kind of stuff. Until eventually people say, okay, okay, enough already, it's working, I'm, I'm set, I'm going to the new direction. But it takes a while. I mean, imagine the merging of two completely diverse cultures. I mean, imagine creating a merger of, um, let's say, France and England, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, putting that together in a merger, you could not do that in a few weeks for the man on the conference call. Um, <laughs> probably, couldn't, probably couldn't do it. Um, but I mean, a merger, merger of two, big, that's a bit, that's a bad, I don't like that example, that's a bad example of nations. I mean, it's completely different cultural issues. But let's take a, a, a better example. A merger of two disparate companies, one in absolute new tech and one in, you know, old manufacturing technology. And that happens often enough. Right. Kind of another one by the other to try to get a foothold. Well, you've got people who, now they all talk the same language, but they're, you've got an age difference, you've certainly got a cultural difference, you've got a geographic difference, you've certainly got a very different outlook on the sort of on the way of doing business. Um, it, just, you know, it just does not happen very easily. Um, and that's true of many other, many other emerging changes. Many, many changes happen. You know, people are pretty comfortable in one direction. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, they've got used to their boss, they've got used to their job, and um, so people don't resist change. I mean, that's a, that's a mistake to assume people automatically resist change. And I, I tell people that's, that's not the case. I and mean, every ask every individual, every said, oh, I don't resist. And what they resist is change that they don't understand or change that they think is 
not needed or change the things in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Right? say, look, we're going to change your pay. We're actually going to double it. You know, I think you'd probably say, okay. Um, but he said, we're going to move your office or relocate you or change your job description in a radical way or do something else, even if the end result of all these things is going to be great. Unless you knew the end result was going to be great, you'd say, hey, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, you need to tell me more about this. And so change is resisted when it's when it had to, I mean, in the wrong direction. Now, often, you know, I find people in the, at the front line of an organization are more eager to change and understand better where it should be than the people leading it. And the people leading it do pretty well. They're making, you know, million-dollar salaries and taking their stock options, and they're pretty secure, and they, if they do a bad job, they'll get paid off. The people at the front line see customers unhappy with the product, the product that really isn't working, they're not getting what they want. They say, hey, we need to change. We need to make better stuff. We need to change the pricing. We need to change the way we distribute. We need to change the way we communicate customers. We need to change our support. So the irony is that, that you know, I hear senior executives saying, oh, people are just resistant to change. No, they're resistant to change. They don't believe in it. They haven't been convinced if needed or haven't maybe been consulted on. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I have two more questions for you. Um, One, what are some common things that organizations look back and say, gosh, I wish I had known um, with regard to change? Uh, um, Good question. I'm tempted to look at my thesaurus and pitfalls. Clarity on the case, um, resources, and engaging stakeholders. 
say couples ahead of time. Okay. Um, those are the three people say. Well, those are the three that there's sort of the th- three things that start being done immediately. But you know, I, I mean, I sometimes think well, often, you know, I get a call um, after the event, so to speak. Things seem to be going a little off the rails. What do we do? Sort of stuff. And those are the three things that. Yeah. Uh, My final question for you is, looking forward instead of looking back, where do you see change management in five or ten years? What what do you think the state, how will it evolve? What will the state of change management be? That's a great question. Um, That's a great question. I can't, well, as I sort of think through it, I'm trying to think how it's evolved in the last five or ten or the last 15 or 20 and in some ways it hasn't evolved at all. I mean, in some ways it's interesting how, I mean, it's kind of funny how business in some ways has evolved. Yeah. My, my management processes, uh, you know, at the, that, that, that you know, we're meeting now, and the same sorts of things are going on as went on 20 years ago. The technology is completely different, but the stuff that's happening around that technology is it's still, it's still, um, it's still just the same. So mm-hmm. I would say, I'm just thinking of the evolution. The evolution from 10 or 20 years ago to now is that I think people have much better understanding about how change occurs and what needs to be done to manage it well. If you said, if we could just sort of say, is change managed any better now? I think it'd be pretty hard to say it is. Um, it's managed very well sometimes in most some organizations, but not always. I would say, I would like to think that in 10 years, people would have, there'd be a broader understanding of the sort of core, but in its core, change management is relatively simple. Um, I mean, I think, I mean, what I try to say in, in, in my book on the subject is that, you know, we all know how to do it, and there's just a few basic rules. There's a huge literature, as you know, absolutely vast yeah. literature. I yeah. think a lot of it, some of it, a lot of it's very, very good, but some of it is perhaps over-complex um, and perhaps goes into too much detail on the sort of psychological and social reactions of individuals I hope to see a sort of a more of a shared responsibility, a sort of adult adult framework in which people at every level in the organization understand how the change is being made, how it needs to be made, what their roles are, and kind of work on it as a team rather than as sort of a set of people directing and a set of people following. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where we're evolving in business anyway. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's hopeful that that could, that could happen. I mean, I think the way people are treated in business now, thanks among other things to the, to the internet and the intranet, um, is, you know, is much more, much more, much more sharing of information and flattening of the organization and treating people as, rather than as, as, as units, so to speak. So I would say, I mean, it's almost, it sounds rather, Facile, perhaps, to say of a sort of a social, social the wrong word, but I'm grasping for something. I mean, it's it sort of maybe more team based, is a way of describing a team based process of change management, and it's going to be easy to model that on, on what's happened. I can see it evolving in that, dire- in that direction. More engagement at lower levels, more engagement of people. And I mean, and that's really just continuing the process of what's happening. I mean, organizations are learning that engaging employees and motivating employees, and somebody's engaged if they're you know, committed to what's happening and understand where they fit, feel empowered, well rewarded, well informed. And if you've got engaged people, then managing change is pretty easy because they kind of do it themselves. And that's why one of the things I sometimes say is that you've got to manage change before it happens. You manage change before it happens by creating an organization in which people are engaged and people are committed, people are supportive, and managers you know, understand their job is to lead 
lead the team and rather than to direct it. And when you have an organization with those characteristics, you could engage people. Then you know, okay, guys, today this is we're doing. It's um, um, this is the direction we're going, or 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 you know, even to contribute to it. So a group of engaged people is going to deal with change much more effectively and uh, um, I say functionally. Thank you for joining us for Keys to Making Change Management Last.